Five Essential Metaphors to Heal Your Mind Part 2B of 3 by Luminous Mountain Here we will cover the third, fourth and fifth mind metaphors. Please take the time and effort to internalize these five stories. Your mind is not just in your brain, it is found throughout your body. In fact, about 1,000 years ago, Chinese Buddhism, Yogacara, thought that the mind is completely non-localized, exists even outside the body. But this is beyond the scope of this presentation. Third metaphor, tuning the lewd strings. When the Buddha realized the agonies of the world outside his palace, he vowed to find the solution to end the sufferings. Venturing out, he sought guidance from various masters, but his practices made him weak, skinny, and emaciated. One day, he heard a fisherman teaching a boy to play the lute. If the string is tuned too tightly, what would we gain, boy? asked the fisherman. It'll break, said the boy. If they are tuned too loose, We'll get terrible music, replied the boy. So, we cannot tune the lute too tight and too loose. To get nice music, the strings has to be tuned somewhere in between, getting it just right, the fisherman instructed. At this moment, the Buddha knew that he had practiced wrongly. He ran away from joys of the palace and dived deep into complete denial of comforts. He has been living a life of extremes. The right way, the Buddha realized, is the way of moderation or the middle path, free from both extremes, finding a desired mean for things to work just right. It is important to appreciate that the middle path is not a life of 50%. When you reach a goal halfway, you don't say you practice the middle path, hence okay not to reach till the end. Like tuning the lute strings, it has nothing to do with quantitative calculation, but a process of finding a medium ground seeking a quality outcome for the music to work just right. Fourth metaphor, Rubik's Cube Challenge. Rubik's Cube, a cube with six colored faces, is the world's best-selling toy. Invented by a Hungarian architect, it was sold worldwide as a 3D puzzle in the 80s. Each face has a specific color covered by nine stickers. Each face turns independently, thus mixing up the colors. The challenge is to return all the six faces to their specific color as fast as possible. When one first played the toy, it was difficult to get even one face with a single color. But once you get it, you'll feel a sense of accomplishment though the puzzle was not soft at all. To solve this puzzle with speed requires serious practice, as well as good grasp of some principles and techniques. The present record holder 2018 by a Chinese teenager is 3.47 seconds. Our life, like the Rubik's Cube, can be broadly represented by six domains. Relationship, wealth, knowledge, authority, calling, and soul work. They intermingle and move dynamically. Many times, as we are not aware of the specific domains, our focus tend to be on one obvious domain at the expense of neglecting others. It is like having only one face with the right color. You might be hung up with getting your relationship right, neglecting your own soul work, 
not realizing that how you attend to your soul work affects all your relationships with others. Our challenge in this game of life, like the Rubik's Cube, is to get all six domains to align. Once the puzzle is solved, it'll get mixed up again, but with practice, it'll get better and faster. Strive to be familiar with the six domains. Knowing them, dive deep into life and see how everything falls into place. The domains are detailed in another YouTube clip entitled The Full Life. Fifth metaphor, making leather sandals first. Tibet, a land of high plateaus, rocks all over with little greens. There was a palace, with the royalties having the habit of going barefoot. Everyone in the villages was barefoot too. One day, the queen decided to visit a village, and an eight-man drawn carriage was used. Something caught her attention, and she wanted to stop. Without hesitation, she alighted and stepped on sharp rocks, which cut her foot bleeding. In fear, she asked her advisor, Why are these rocks so sharp? What can we do about it? Panicking, her advisor answered, We must now cover the village paths with leather. Good, said the queen. Our subjects can then walk comfortably and faster without getting hurt. The design planning started with the king and ministers all actively involved. The only problem was that large amount of ladder were needed to pave the paths. Where to find them? The court jester standing on the side was amused. He blurted, Why not we teach the villagers to make their own ladder sandals first? Everyone looked at each other in amazement. From that day onwards, all the villagers know how to make their own sandals and there was never a need to pave the paths with leather. Learn to make your own sandals first before you want to cover the world's rocky roads. When your feet are protected, the rocks won't hurt you. To be altruistic, be true to yourself first. To be selfless, we need to have a self first. Then only there is something nice to let go. When we don't know of our own self, all our perception of others will be distorted. There is no anchor. Shantideva, 8th century, an Indian Buddhist sage proclaimed, Where would there be ladder enough to cover the entire world? With just the ladder of my sandals, it is as if the whole world were covered. If you have gained value from this work, always give others the opportunity to reap this value too. Sharing is caring, and caring brings fortune.